First of all, thanks thanks for having me here. I am uh, honored uh, uh, to be able to present uh, on OSD Cloud, and and uh, you know I'm I'm honestly taken aback by the uh, reception it's had. It's been really positive so far, and um, uh, what I'd like to do is kind of share um, a general overview of OSD Cloud and show some new things that are coming. Uh, I'm David Segura. You can find me on osdeploy.com or osdcloud.com, which will redirect to the proper subdomain. I'm also on Twitter and not on Facebook. Um, I don't know why. I just stopped doing that years ago. So let's begin. So... Um, I'm not a consultant. I am a an OSD uh, an OS deployment team manager. Uh, so I manage some OSD techs uh, at Baker Hughes. Uh, I am mildly active in the community. Um, most of my time is spent writing PowerShell modules, the OSD module, OSD Builder, which is probably what I'm most well known for, and OSD SOS, which is uh, a monthly export of WSOS updates. I'm not a PowerShell expert. You will find uh, I don't adhere to code 100% of the time, maybe not even 70% of the time. Um, and I'm not a PowerPoint expert. I don't typically um, make presentations, so um, you'll have to forgive me if I'm too fast or my slides are ugly. So um, let's start off. What is OSD Cloud? It's it's a way to image a computer over the internet, uh, basically, uh, from WinPE. And with OSD Cloud proper, uh, you can build WinPE, which supports PowerShell Gallery and wireless. And then using this customized WinPE, you can download the Microsoft feature update and apply it to uh, a system, as well as applying drivers from Dell, HP, and Lenovo. And uh, optionally, you can uh, throw in an autopilot configuration file. So it's it's a very simple uh, and easy way to image a machine without uh, any infrastructure. All you need is is a method of booting up, whether it's an ISO in a virtual machine or a USB stick. Uh, so it's cheap. You got a few requirements. Um, you need Windows 10 1809. Uh, with admin rights, 64-bit only. Uh, I have not done any coding or any uh, scripting for 32-bit, and I don't think I've got any plans to do that, so my apologies if, uh, if that's what you're looking for. 1809 is also required because uh, one of the things that makes all of this work is a tiny executable that Microsoft put in there called curl.exe, and this is what allows downloads to run very fast in, in WinPE uh, without using PowerShell's invoke web re request. You need a good internet connection. Uh, with a good internet connection, you can typically complete the WinPE phase in less than 10 minutes. That's downloading the feature update and the drivers. And on your machine, you also need ADK with the WinPE add-on because you're gonna be using that to create your boot image, um, and you'll need the OSD PowerShell module from PowerShell Gallery, and the installation command is right there. Very simple. And so once you get these requirements out of the way, um, it's designed so that you have to build a template first. The reason we build a template, or the reason I designed the template is because you may want to customize OSD Cloud uh, your boot media for maybe different customers, different um, different requirements. Um, and so this allows you a very easy way to uh, create a template that you can build these custom um, WinPEs from. It's also a, a neat way to take this WinPE and use it in MDT or Configuration Manager because the template contains a what I call a universal WinPE, which doesn't have anything OSD Cloud related applied to it. Uh, you can see here that I do enable PowerShell Gallery. 
which was a very simple process to do. Uh, PowerShell Gallery never worked in PE because it's missing some variables, some system variables, and it's uh, missing, um, I can't, package management, I believe. And so running new OSD Cloud Template will actually do this for you. It'll enable PowerShell Gallery, set the execution policy, and download the required packages. It also copies from your host OS, curl, setx, msinfo32, OSK, which is on-screen keyboard, and Dart, if you happen to have that installed, which is very helpful. Uh, it gives you Windows Explorer, so you can uh, browse files in WinPE, and you're not limited to just the command line. You do have a couple parameters you can use for new OSD Cloud template. The first one is WinRE. This is what tells it to build off of your local Windows uh, recovery environment, which contains wireless support. By default, it's going to build off of the ADK's WinPE. So this, uh, this is how you would enable wireless by using the WinRE switch. And you can also add multiple languages using the language parameter to customize uh, WinPE for your uh, location. By default, English US is the language that is uh, used. And what I have here is I've got two screenshots. Um, this is something you typically don't see. This is a, an unreleased version. I'll be pushing this out tomorrow. But what I've decided to do is go back and actually detail what is being done in all the steps for OSD Cloud when you're building it so you guys can understand what's happening. I think when you run this, if you run this on your current version, of the OSD module, you'll have to add a verbose switch to, to see a lot of output. But now it's very clean and it, it tells you exactly what is going to happen. It'll also create a transcript of um, the build process. In case there are any issues, you can just reach out to me on Twitter, not Facebook. But if you look, um, everything in yellow kind of gives you an idea of what, what's happening. Um, we can see the copy WinRE process, and that's a, an OSD function. Um, we talk about the WGL4 underscore boot true type font, which is used to fix um, the resolution when uh, WinPE starts on a UEFI. Um, but you see a lot of information here, which tells you exactly what is going in to this universal WinPE. And this is continued on the next page, but you'll at the very bottom, you'll see all the ADK packages that are being added, as well as the language-related ADK packages. Uh, and then once that's done, the image is saved. Uh, you can see curl, setx, msinfo32, and OSK are being copied into WinPE. Microsoft Dart is going to be expanded with the Dart config coming from Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Uh, the image will again be saved. Execution policy will be set to bypass uh, because there's really no need to have an execution policy in WinPE. And that, that is a step that uh, a lot of people will forget to do uh, once they get into WinPE and launch PowerShell. So this is done automatically. Uh, the enable PowerShell gallery is handled by another function that's in OSD. So you can actually enable this in your own WinPE images. It's not just for OSD Cloud. Um, finally, you'll see the WinPE SHL removed from WinRE. Uh, and then I set some uh, default console uh, environment settings, which give you the ability to resize your command window or PowerShell window. Um, Everything's dismounted, exported, so everything's nice and compact, and then your template's created. And all of this, as we can see here in the bottom, was done in about three and a half minutes. Very quick process. And then once your template is done, um, you can now create an OSD Cloud workspace. And the workspace is what you're going to customize. Um, there's no customizations in the template, uh, which is what makes it a template. Um, but the workspace is really just a copy of the template. In order to get Autopilot to work, there is one option to 
and this is documented on my on uh, OST Cloud website, but the template is created in Program Data OSD Cloud. And I'm going to bring this into view here. And for autopilot to function, it's as simple as dropping in your profiles into a pre-created directory that's already there for you. And then this will ensure that it's transferred over to your workspace and built into your WinPE. And I can show you what that actually results in once we get into the demo phase. And, and as you can see, when we create the workspace, it's just a copy. Um, I have a little screenshot here of the copy process, which you'll actually see there's a little more information about where it's being copied from and where it's being copied to. And this took a whole one second. So this is not something that's going to be very complicated. And there's really nothing to it. The only parameter you have is to set the path. And once you have your workspace built in PowerShell, you can you can run things like get OSD Cloud Workspace, and that function will return your workspace. And you can also run a set if you need to change the directory. And this is helpful if you're working with different workspaces for different customers. Let's see if we can go to the next slide. So to customize WinPE, there is another function that's used. It's called edit OSD cloud WinPE. Now with this function, this allows you to add some drivers that I have pre-staged. So you can easily add the Dell driver pack for WinPE, HP, or VMware. Uh, for WinRE support, you'll need to also, uh, for wireless support, you'll need to add the Intel wireless drivers. If you don't want to use a pre-canned cloud driver, you can specify a driver path. Um, there's two new functions that are coming in place tomorrow, PS module copy and PS module install. So this will, the module install will allow you to easily install any module that's in PowerShell gallery that you may want to put in WinPE. And the module copy is one that I use frequently. Uh, for example, I, I do some building and testing in the OSD module. And before I release that publicly, um, I'll use this to copy what I've created in the OSD module into WinPE. Um, this is also a method for you to create your own custom PowerShell modules and not publish them to PowerShell Gallery and to copy them into your uh, OSD Cloud WinPE so you can use them and keep them private. Wallpaper parameter is, is somewhat self-explanatory. It allows you to use a custom wallpaper instead of the default WinPE blue. Um, and there's also a final parameter WebPS script, which you can give it a URL. And I've demonstrated this on my website uh, for OSD Cloud. Uh, this is used to maybe set some uh, parameters for, for OSD Cloud. Um, so you can do some custom functions using uh, a web script. Um, so this is documented, and, and you can reach out to me for any questions on this, but this is documented on osdcloud.com, and a couple of people have done some write-ups on this, so I'm not going to spend too much time on that. And once you create, once you edit your WinPE, you can create an ISO. Uh, by default, this command is going to create two separate ISOs, one with uh, the default prompt, press any key to boot to WinPE, and the other one without a prompt. So if you boot to that ISO, you're gonna boot straight into WinPE without being prompted. And that's very useful if you're building uh, off of a uh, WVD uh, or automating things. And then the fi finally for deployment, you have a couple of requirements. Um, you have a link which you can read all about it, the walkthrough, but um, obviously you, you can have an Intel wireless card in order for wireless to work. If you have a different brand of wireless card, you'll need to add those drivers manually using edit OSD Cloud WinPE and specifying a driver path. And OSD Cloud will work on virtual machines, 
It's been tested on VMware by uh, Brooks Pepin, and uh, uh, I use it in Hyper-V all the time. Uh, or Dell, HP, and Lenovo models are fully supported out of the box. So now it's time for a watch and learn. Um, what I'm going to do here is pull up OSD Cloud, and this we're just going to boot straight into it. I'll restart this so you guys can see. There's the prompt that you won't get if you use the ISO that does not have the built-in prompt. And this is this is how it starts up. It doesn't do anything uh, special um, other than kicking off wireless, and it sees that I've got a an Ethernet connection. I already have a connection to the internet, so it skips that. Also, there's no wireless hardware in this virtual machine. And if we move this over here, we can see this is uh, my start net here. And the first command we're doing is winp init, which is going to initialize the drivers. And then we're going to start a PowerShell uh, window minimized. And this guy is sitting down here, and it's doing nothing, absolutely nothing. And the reason this is doing nothing, it, it's so if you need to get to a PowerShell prompt while OSD Cloud is running, this is min minimized here for you to uh, use it. Uh, I like to use this to maybe capture a screenshot without interfering with my session. The, the next command is going to start WinRE Wi-Fi. That's a function that's built into the OSD module. It already popped up and ran and uh, exited out. Uh, and finally, it dumps me into a PowerShell uh, window. In the background, I can see that I've specified a wallpaper, which is uh, my PowerPoint uh, first, my title slide. Uh, very easy to do. And the reason why, why don't we start in OSD Cloud? And, and one of the big reasons is because it's based off of OSD module, so things can change. Um, and I didn't want it to kick off OSD Cloud uh, if there are some functions or some things you wanted to run first. And one of the first things we can do is, is go ahead and uh, install an updated OSD module. Very easy to do. I'll add a verbose so we can see what's happening. Uh, and as we can see, PowerShell Gallery works like a dream uh, in PE. So, this will allow you to use uh, an old ISO, something that's maybe a month old, and running this first will allow you to get the latest OSD module, which has the latest bits for OSD Cloud, and then from here you can kick off a start OSD Cloud session. And so that's the reason why it doesn't kick off automatically into start OSD Cloud. Now, we're gonna skip that and pop into another VM. Another thing that is, is uh, coming, and you guys get to see this first, and I'm simply going to change the font size so you can see, you can see what I'm typing. And this should be available, this should be released, I don't know, this weekend. Start OSD Cloud GUI. So this is a, a another front end uh, in order to get into OSD Cloud uh, and image and machine. Very, very simple, but it will allow me to select my build. 21H1 is uh, released, so it will be the release version when I push out the update tomorrow. Um, before um, this new version, it had been the Windows Insider pre-release version, which I don't think there's any difference, but starting tomorrow, this will be the official version of 21H1. I'm able to select uh, an addition using this GUI, and as you can see, my license defaults to retail because there is no volume home edition. But um, everything I could normally do from the command line is going to be in this GUI. We could see my manufacturer and product is none, uh, so there's going to be no drivers. Custom image, um, as you can see, there's nothing here. 
But what I can do here, what, what I like to do is uh, when I image a box, sometimes I might put a custom image on a USB and it looks in a specific path. It looks in uh, an OSD cloud subdirectory. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe simulate that. Um, I'm going to map a drive to my box. See if I knew the right password. Bingo. And now I'm going to start OSD Cloud GUI. And while that is starting, I'm going to drop open in this other PowerShell window. And I have Dart installed, and that's what gives me Explorer. But you can see on the drive that I mapped, I've got a directory called OSD Cloud. And in here, I have OS. And I've dropped some in insider. Um, install WIMS. And so if you had a USB drive that you were booting to that has this media, it's going to look in a path of your USB drive called OSD Cloud and then OS, and just look in all the subdirectories. And if you do that, then you're able to select a custom image, and I'm able to choose a custom image like this. And the benefit of doing this is I can use my own customized image but still rely on OSD Cloud to pull the drivers from um, you know, HP or Dell or Lenovo. And finally, I'm still working on the OSD Cloud post configuration. And as you see here, uh, we've got to do nothing. And this is the default of OSD Cloud. Whenever you're done imaging, it's just going to drop you. You're still in WinPE. There's no reboot. And that's also in case you want to run any post install uh, commands before you reboot from PE. And as you can see here, I have a couple new options which are going to come out. Uh, we've got a restart to OOBE. And in this box here, it's going to tell you exactly what it's going to do. And the ones I think that you're probably most interested in is restart to OOBE and run autopilot OSD. Um, so this is another um, function that is going to be added if you select this. That way you can run Shift F10 and simply run Autopilot OSD, and it's going to bring you into a GUI, which will allow you to press some buttons and uh, install your Autopilot modules, um, your Autopilot Intune module, your MS Graph, and uh, it'll allow you to enter some group tags um, in order to register and enroll your device. So this will be coming in the next day or two. An audit mode option is also in here. Uh, additionally, we can see that it's found autopilot configuration files. So in the GUI version of OSD Cloud, uh, this is where I would simply select an autopilot JSON, and it will simply copy that into um, the proper directory it needs to, um, to provision the device automatically, uh, to enroll the device automatically. Sorry. So I wish I could hear uh, feedback from people, but I'm just going to keep on going. Um, I just didn't want to interrupt you. I got a question, actually. Yeah. Um, Regarding the, the Windows images or the, the OS builds, uh, you showed us before you simulated the USB part that there were still some uh, OSs to be installed. Where do they come from then? The, um, the OSs, and if I, if I change this from uh, one of my custom images to nothing, yeah. you can see here I've got a build, uh, an addition language, and all of these come from uh, Microsoft. Okay. And these are pulled from WSUS. They're pulled from feature updates. Mm -hmm. And I put them in um, the OSD module using uh, this command, get feature update. And if you see here, um, let's do this. There, can we read that now? Yeah, set res is short for set display resolution. This is another function in the OSD module, works great in VMs. But as you can see here, 
Uh, the feature update for 21H1 is going to be straight from Microsoft. Okay, good. Okay, that's that's great. So you really don't have to have anything besides the initial ISO uh, for booting into into OSD Cloud. Okay, cool. Thanks. That's correct. Um, and we can kick off. Um, I can kick off a deployment just to just to show that. And in this one, I haven't run Start OSD Cloud. Let me set my display resolution. And then change the font size of PowerShell so it's a little easier to read what's going on. And start OSD Cloud, you can run it without any parameters. But if I tab through here, you can see there's there's quite a few parameters that can be used. Uh, OS build. If I want to deploy in 1903, I can. Um, OS edition. Home. Um, and I can just kick it off this way. And what it's going to do, it's going to do a check. It's going to uh, run get feature update and determine the retail license, the OS edition, and the index uh, that I need. It's also tested the web con uh, connection. So this is really just a, um, a pre-flight when, when I run Star OSD Cloud. Now, since I didn't pass a language um, option, it's prompting me for one. And I really don't care what I pick here. I'm just going to choose 13, uh, which is, uh, I don't know, French Canadian. Um, and as you can see here, it's going to kick off. Um, it's running the get feature update function again. And it's given it all these parameters. And then the parameters return. This is the URL that I need to download the French Canadian version of um, Windows 10. 1903. And so it then passes those parameters to another function called invoke OSD Cloud. And because invoke OSD Cloud uh, finds that I have autopilot JSONs, I'm able to pick one or, or skip one if I wanted to. Um, and it shows me here exactly what's in my JSON file that will be applied. And I've also enabled the ODT, the Office Deployment Tool. Um, I won't go into too much detail about that. It was uh, it was more or less I was just showing off that it could be done, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. And one of the first things that's going to happen is I'm going to have to clear the disk. Uh, if you have multiple disks, they're all going to be cleared. Um, it won't clear any USB drives. Uh, but one thing I've also tried to do is put in here what functions I'm using. And for this particular um, clear disk, I've written a clear dash disk dot fixed. So this is going to clear all of my fixed disks, um, which I only have one. So there should be really no effort. And then it's going to create a new OS disk using the new OS disk function. Because it's a virtual machine, it's not going to create a recovery partition. If this were a physical machine, it would. And as you can see here, I'm uh, I'm in the office and I'm not really getting the best speeds. But this is uh, able to download the Windows 10 ESD in I don't know what appears to be under 20 minutes. Uh, so it's not that bad uh, when you consider there really isn't much work to do. Uh, now, when you have the drives mapped, like I, I did in my other example, it will obviously uh, be pulling that from a local source. And what I can do is I can run, um, you know, a custom image or not a custom image, a default image here of 20H2 and There it is. It's all those parameters it's taken, and, and now it's going to kick off Start OSD Cloud. And again, this has found um, the ones that the autopilot configuration files that appear in um, 
my X drive that were added to WinPE, but it's also found some in the map drive, which again is simulating USB. Now, obviously this won't be here when it's released because I should have selected this in the GUI. So uh, I'm still working on finalizing the, the GUI and that's partly why it hasn't been released yet. But, you know, there, there will be this functionality in here in order to do it. And so we're going to fix, uh, clear the disk. This one has two drives. I'm just going to say A for yes to all. And because I have more than one drive, I'm, I am prompted to select which drive I want it on. I mean, on a UEFI machine, there's no reason I need to install this on disk zero. I can install this on disk one if I want to. Uh, if one is the better drive for an OS. And I'll let um, you know the UEFI startup handle which drive it's going to boot to. And because, again, uh, I've mapped a drive which has the image, there's nothing to download. You can see that it's copied the image file that it's found from my Z drive, which is my map drive, and now it's applying it um, using expand Windows image. Uh, so there is a benefit of saving the content on a USB if, if you have multiple installs or you want to speed things up, but it's absolutely not necessary. And this is gonna truck on uh, and do what it wants to do. And finally, um, there is an option and I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this out. We'll just revert this virtual machine when we talk about drivers, um, drivers uh, aren't uh, targeted by model, they're targeted by product. And when I say product, um, vendors like Dell and HP, they have a name that they assign a piece of hardware and it's, it's not a um, easy name to remember. Um, it's more or less their internal name, but that's how they assign um, tag computers, and it's called a product. And we can get the product, uh, let's see, get my, get my computer product. This is going to return nothing in a virtual machine, but if I were to run this in my physical machine, you would see my computer product is 0A32. And we can see here, another function built into OSD is get my Dell driver cab. And we're gonna again see that product is also known as a system SKU for Dell. Uh, HP has their own product and Lenovo has their own product designation, but uh, they're typically sorted by product and not the actual model. And that's how it associates a driver pack. Um, and it also tells me where to get the driver from. I can see the B is truncated. It's on the next line. Uh, here it is. So this is uh, the driver that I would need for this particular model. And I can see my product is an 0832. And what's neat about OSD Cloud I'm going to make this larger again for visibility and increase the size of my Hyper-V. Um, now this is a Microsoft virtual machine, um, but I can tell it my manufacturer is a Dell and my product is um, 08. 32. So this should simulate um, a Dell Precision 7730. And we're just going to kick it off like this. I'm going to pick 21H1, uh, 64 Enterprise. And while it gets my driver pack, again, keep in mind. I'm going to control C, cancel this. Keep in mind, this is a Microsoft virtual machine, but I was able to tell it that I'm actually a Dell 
7730. And so it has associated the proper Dell download with this uh, install. And I guess the big reason I did this was so that I can simulate hardware in a virtual machine, which really sped up the development of OSD Cloud. But it also lets you play around with and, and maybe pre-install uh, drivers onto a virtual machine. If you're making a master image, uh, you're able to do it this way. So lots of different things um, going on here. And finally, I'm going to bring up what a completed deployment looks like. Let me set my resolution again. And in this deployment, um, I simulated an HP model. Uh, you could see the title of my virtual machine, HP 8735 ProBook X360. And if I scroll up to the top, I can see that my command line specified that uh, manufacturer and that product. And so when I look down towards the driver piece, we can see that it did actually pull the HP driver pack. And it's placed that in C drivers in an unexpanded state. And let's take a look at that. And we see the executable is here. Unfortunately, I can't, I can't run the executable because it's a 32-bit compiled executable. Um, and so obviously I can't do anything with it in 64-bit architecture. So what OST Cloud does is on the next reboot, it's going to go ahead and expand and apply this. And I'll demonstrate that in, uh, in here. And let me just show you the last piece is to save the OST Cloud offline modules. You'll see the OSD module is copied. We can look in Windows Explorer in Program Files, Windows PowerShell, module. And one thing to look at is we have PowerShell get, we have package management. Um, so everything we need, let's look in here, the right place. Azure AD, Graph Intune, everything we need to autopilot this machine has already been copied down and put into place. Um, we can see the scripts, get Windows autopilot info is already there. So Realistically, all you have to do once you get into OBE, if you didn't add an autopilot file, is just shift F10, open a command prompt, start PowerShell, and then run your Git Windows autopilot info with whatever group tag you need. So that's already been copied in, into here. And I'm going to reboot and let this restart into specialized phase where we're going to see those HP drivers get expanded and actually applied. And this might take a minute to, uh, to, to come up. I'm going to check to see if we have any questions. Yeah, just wanted to, to jump in here. There is actually a question by Max, and he's asking which vendors are supported and how difficult is it to add a new vendor uh, with vendor being a manufacturer? Uh, an example would be nice. Um, but the way this for works, Shiba. <laughs> for Shiba. <laughs> so uh, I'm not uh, very familiar with Toshiba, um, but Dell and HP and Lenovo, they place all their drivers in cabs that are easily accessible um, for us to grab over the internet and uh, kind of associate a product with uh, a driver pack. And then once we know that URL, um, I can obviously add to OSD Cloud to to pull this down, but um, yeah, if if there's some need for me to get Toshiba, I can look into adding that. Um, I think I'm I'm working on Panasonic Toughbooks right now, scraping web pages, and I've already done something similar. Uh, Microsoft Surface mm. is supported um, as well, 
Um, and those are scraping web pages, and that works beautifully. So, OS Cloud does support HP, Lenovo, VMware, uh, um, and Microsoft Surface. Uh, I guess Toshiba would fall to the back of the list. Um, and so, what are you looking at now? Let me just jump in here real quick. Yeah, sure. See, the specialized startup has found the executable. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually reading to see the file description uh, to know that it's compiled with HP Softpak wrapper. And this will tell me what command line I need to use to unpack this uh, driver cab, which I do. And then I simply run, um, you know, uh, add the drivers here to the OS and specialize. That way, when it reboots to OBE, these drivers for the HP are going to be installed. So, very simple uh, process. It works beautifully um, in order to uh, support this model for a driver pack that does not unzip in WinPE. So, not much to see here. This is a virtual machine, not an HP, but this is what an HP would look like. And the one final thing I can show you guys is what would it look like uh, wireless? And so what I did was um, I captured this video at home. And you can see that my connection to Google failed. And so because I'm recording this and this happened on a physical uh, Dell machine, uh, it did have a wireless card installed, and, uh, and it simply uh, pulls up a list of available SSIDs. And you see me, I'm the first one. Uh, and what it does, it gives me an index. And so I'm going to take this index, minus 636, and simply give it the password for my access point. And then it should connect. So this is a this is if you play with OSD Cloud and and you use WinRE, uh, this is a, exactly how the wireless functionality is going to work if you have an Intel wireless adapter in your system. It does take a little bit for it to uh, get a good connection, as you can see, I've got one, and then this will close automatically, and from here. I can start OSD Cloud. I'm now on the internet. I'm going to fast forward this. Um, and you can see here that the, my wireless is actually pretty good. This is downloading the image. And you can see the total time. This is an estimate of how long it's going to take to completely download this Windows 10 image. And it looks like under four minutes, which is not bad um, for wireless. Uh, so, in this particular example, I did not need a, an Ethernet connection at all. So, this is one of the, uh, the neat things you can do when you use WinRE uh, to build your OSD Cloud WinPE. And this should be the last, uh, the last piece that I wanted to, to show you guys. Uh, I was hoping to have a couple extra minutes to answer any questions. And I'll just leave this running. So first of all, I have to say I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> it's a re really, really cool thing. Um, so in theory, you could completely reach a fully automated uh, rebuild of a of a client with an ISO that you put on, on an USB stick, send it out to the customer, with the right autopilot configuration file, they just put it in, boot from from the USB stick, and rest is running completely automatically. Yes, um, although there there are several prompts. Um, one thing that I recommend is if you're doing this for a client, um, you actually look at uh, automating this. Uh, let me see if I can find the uh, the proper guy. And I do have this uh, OSD cloud. It's called, uh, I'm going to collapse these, 
custom OSD cloud here. But what this in what I'm doing in this example is I've created a uh, a script on GitHub, and I think I have a link somewhere right here. So this link here um, is a custom script. Let me see if I can make this larger so you guys can see it. Nope. Let's do this. Let's simply pull up the uh, script itself. Um, right here. And you'll see this is a uh, simply a PowerShell script. I've got a write host. I've got a change resolution using set disres. Um, an automatic update the OSD module right here and import it. Um, and I've got my command line, start OSD cloud with the language, the build, the addition uh, with the ZTI switch. And uh, simply putting this uh, PowerShell script in the cloud allows me to uh, now when I build my WinPE, I simply use the WebPS script um, and give it this URL. You see, edit OSD Cloud WinPE with the URL. And now what's going to happen is during execution, instead of kicking off a an empty PowerShell script that I would uh, PowerShell window that I would normally uh, type in start OSD Cloud. It's going to kick off uh, my script on GitHub. So this is how you would completely um, customize whatever you want to um, configure for a, a customer if you want to do it for them, uh, picking the, the build. The neat thing about this, and when I say you can do this for a customer, is because the script actually sits on GitHub, you can change it at any time. Mm -hmm. And that will ensure that you never have to update WinPE. All the changes are in the script itself. Uh, and so you can use the same WinPE over and over um, as long as you just edit the script in uh, GitHub. Awesome. That's pretty cool. So you can really send out that one USB stick and they, you, they don't have to care about uh, getting that updated and so on. You just, yeah, that's really, really cool. Absolutely, yeah. And so this is a... This is what StartNet looks like. Um, I showed you how I put in that URL using edit OSD Cloud WinPE. And, and so this is exactly what it's going to do in my StartNet. It's going to open PowerShell and it's going to use an, the function invoke dash WebPS script and give it the URL. Um, and that's that. Uh, and in this custom script, you can you can do a reboot, uh, obviously using the shutdown command. You can edit it to however you want to suit your needs. So this is what I would definitely recommend if if you're going to bottle this for uh, a customer. Nice. And and finally, um, you know, there's there's a lot of new stuff that's going to be coming. Um, when I say here, invoke OSD cloud. Um, Everything is a uh, switching to variable based. And as you can see, I have a variable called start OSD cloud, which has all the uh, settings. I'm going to try and uh, shrink this down so you can easily see it. But when you run start OSD cloud, it really is setting these global um, variables uh, that uh, invoke OSD cloud picks up. And this is how it determines what to run. And this is very, um, very limited. But when I look here at this one that actually did complete, um, and I do a, a, a get variable, I've got, um, now let's see. And we can see here, 
everything that I'm doing with Invoke OSD Cloud has been set. Um, and there, there are some things that haven't been set. So probably within the next couple of weeks, you'll be able to specify these variables uh, to where you can completely bypass uh, start OSD Cloud. And if you have these variables set, such as in a script on GitHub, mm -hmm. Um, everything will be built exactly how you want it to be built. Um, yeah, pretty much everything's in here. Nice. So Very cool. it's coming, it's coming. I'm still working on it. It's not done <laughs> at all. So let's go back to the presentation. Watch and learn is over. And finally, uh, we can hit up some Q and A, which I think we're already there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think we're short on time as well. Yes. Uh, we're open. We're like a podcast. We can co continue forever if we want. So that's totally fine. <laughs> so guys, do you have any questions or comments to OSD Cloud? Or are you just flashed right away? And don't be shy. Well, let me let me skip to the last slide. Um, right here. Uh, I want to say thanks uh, to the workplace ninjas. Ninjas is it pronounced ninjas or ninjas? Ninjas, like the word ninja. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing special. Yeah, I want to say thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, I, I'm welcome to come back at any time. Uh, but I also want to point out, I you know, since OSD Cloud started, I've had uh, several people in the community contribute. Uh, by no means is this an effort from just me anymore. And uh, if you have some ideas and want to contribute, uh, absolutely send me a shout. And uh, let's see how we can make this better. Um, and also thanks to Recast Software. They they decided to uh, to sponsor my website, so thanks very much to them and the bloggers who have all blogged about OSD Cloud. Uh, you know who you are. We can go back to Q and A, but I just wanted to make sure I had enough time to thank uh, thank these people. So I have one question. Uh, you mentioned on Twitter that this is not production ready. Is it now production ready? Well, um, I mean, it works. Um, I, I think that's always the default disclaimer uh, because I would hate for uh, uh, something in OSD Cloud to deploy to a thousand devices and not get it configured right. So, um, you know, to be honest, uh, my goal wasn't to create uh, a cloud repository. It's not even a repository, but it's not. I didn't design it to be able to image everything from everyone. It was more or less a, a, a proof of concept, and to maybe give you guys some ideas on on the fact that you don't need uh, anything downloaded. Um, you can pull everything you need to image a box from the cloud, including the autopilot JSON. If if you were to specify you know a github url and apply that i mean there's so many things you can do to to make it to where you don't need any local content um and it's more or less um i don't don't see this useful as it is in an enterprise because we have you know you know we have intune we've got you know configuration manager and mdt which which you can get so much more granular um in your deployments. So this is, again, like I said, a proof of concept. Um, some people have taken some of the pieces. Uh, for example, I'm mentioning Jeff here. He uh, has taken the driver functionality of pulling the cabs from the internet and put that into his MDT share where he's replaced 100 gigs of drivers in MDT with you know, just downloading on demand. Um, and so, uh, taking pieces from this is perfectly uh, okay. Um, you know, that and the fact uh, I don't think I've got 
uh, enough time to be able to configure it for every enterprise to use, which is also why there's these other methods of kicking off OSD Cloud, such as from the GitHub script. Um, you know, you could also write your own module that has your own start commands and pass those to invoke uh, OSD Cloud. And you, you can put that in WinPE using the copy PS module function that I, I put in a uh, parameter that I put in the uh, edit OSD Cloud WinPE. So it's it's more or less trying to give you options rather than trying to say this is the way you must do it. And I think that's probably the best way to do it for everyone. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Crickets. So Marcus says he's not flashed. He's very, very impressed. And Marcel is uh, telling you to call it a preview. Um, preview, that's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> which makes it totally fine to use on someone's own uh, risk. <laughs> and be able to make changes, even breaking changes. <laughs> And you Absolutely. can leave it in preview for years, as we learned with Microsoft. <laughs> and, and Google, right? Google yeah, calls it. Yeah. Uh, I have another question about uh, your driver functionality. Some customers yes. I, I've learned are very picky with driver versions of specific um, categories like audio drivers or so. Um, is it also a possibility to build that in that uh, you can specify a version of some driver? That, version gets downloaded or is that the focus of you or is it already built in or so? Well, uh, I simply just grabbed the latest driver um, that the vendor, uh, the, the latest driver pack that the vendor has created. Now also understand that vendors typically stop updating driver packs when they're, you know, when a model is, you know, uh, passed in minus one. Um, and so on some of the older Dell models, we see driver packs that are three years old. So, um, you know, unfortunately, that's that's really not something I can solve. Um, you do have some ability using, you know, the method I showed you of how to use uh, GitHub to write your own wrapper yeah. for OSD Cloud. You can, you know, set what you want to download. Um, you could even create your own driver packs, put them in the cloud, and then set the driver pack URL to say, download this instead. Yeah. Or before reboot, you can, you know, if the drivers are expanded in the case of Dell systems, you can simply delete what drivers you don't want. Um, you know, the functionality for the, in the specialized phase actually looks at everything in C colon backslash drivers and if it's a zip file, it's going to expand it out and apply the drivers. If it's a cab, it's going to decompress the cab and apply the drivers. And if it's an HP or Lenovo uh, EXE, it's going to expand those. So you could easily dump in your own zip files. That would be the easiest way to do it. And the module's already built up to where it's going to expand those drivers and apply them if you put it in there. Um, it's like if you build it, they will they will put something in there, right? Okay, thank you. Call it preview, okay. Well, everyone, um, thanks a lot. Um, oh, let me see, Max, do we get Max's question, which vendors are supported? Yeah, I think we got that. Yeah, this is where I just threw in the Toshiba. I don't know, Max, yeah. was Toshiba the one you were talking about? I don't know. Uh, I think the uh, example of the Microsoft um, tablets or uh, Surface is the right word, um, was a perfect example. Thank you, David. Yeah, sur Surface is supported out of the box. Perfect. Well, thanks, thanks everyone for having me. Um, Feel free to send me a, a tweet or something if you got any questions or have any problems, or uh, if you want to collaborate on OSD Cloud, hit me up as well.